good morning good afternoon wherever you are um, so I'm talking about how I moved abroad and I ended up in China so um, years ago I just really had this interest about you know visiting other countries moving abroad wasn't really in my mind I didn't think it was a thing then it didn't enter my mind um, but I was I started to um, see you know clips of certain countries particularly New York on the television or an advert and I was really keen to go and see what it was like for myself but then I also had to conquer my fear of heights and planes and um, so I got myself a passport as I didn't have a passport booked my flight with um, Air India very cheap flight um, my flight there um, the, ha the hand rest was broken going to New York and coming back the air con was on cold the whole way and I ended up with a head cold so I will never forget <laughs> that Air India flight but I arrived safely um, got to New York um, and I met I, w I didn't go there and I wasn't alone so I met family I had family there um, and I was absolutely in love with New York and everything to do with New York. The energy there, the people, the atmosphere, it was just fantastic. And I returned and once I returned, I booked another flight and I think for about five consecutive years, I was going to New York, back and forth to New York, just visiting and traveling. And then there was one time I went to um, a wedding or oh, it was some type of event, I was in, in Canada and I literally hired a car and drove all the way to, to New York, spent the weekend and went back <laughs> to Toronto. Because I just love New York. I mean, I haven't been there for years, but I just love or loved New York. I don't know what it's like now, but I know it's a beautiful place. So when I left New York that first, second, third, fourth, fifth time, <laughs> I, I really tried to find out how can I move here? How can I make this a reality and live there? Um, and I think through kind of naivety, a little bit sprinkle of ignorance and not knowing the best avenues to um, move abroad, I wasn't kind of connecting with the right people and finding the right services online to, to make the move. Um, and then what I did discover was, you know, I learned about green cards and I learned about your employer being able to sponsor you if they have a company there. And my employer didn't have a company there. So I kind of knocked that on the head. Just, you know, still hoping and wanting and researching now and again on how to get to New York and live there and work there. Um, and so time just kind of went by and um, I didn't think about it. Um, and lots of time went by and you know you're working and getting on with your life and I that urge to move was always there and so I started looking again um, and fast forward 2017 um, I remember being at work and I was just looking as I always did just looking at what's available um, and how I can move abroad um, I'm not going to go into what I do. I'm definitely I'm not a teacher because not everybody that lives abroad is a teacher. Um, but it was it was um, knowing how to knowing the right agents agencies to connect to, knowing the right websites to connect to, and the right people to connect to is really important. Um, and then so I also created myself a list um, and a list of places that I would be happy to live in what my criteria was. So for instance, you know, a place that's good, you know, and accommodating to people who are vegan, um, the weather had to be good, um, sports and fitness had to be, in, you know, had to be there and available to me, um, and so on. So that's how my list kind of looked. So I knew um, which countries I should start researching. So I started researching countries and places like Singapore and Thailand, um, were coming up, all the warm, wonderful places were coming up. Um, so then somebody was talking about, um, I was watching a vlog actually, and somebody on the vlog was talking about um, living in China, and I thought, no, I'm not going to China. I don't know anything about, or didn't know anything about China at that time, but I just thought, if it's got a cold climate, I'm absolutely not going, and I think that the, the language barrier is going to be really too significant for me 
to go there. Um, and what was happening, I was finding that there were lots of opportunities for me to go and work there, lots of jobs for me to go and work there, you know, get a new com go with a new company and get another con get a different contract. And it was I was finding it really that there were lots of opportunities and I thought, no, I'm not going to. But let me have a look at what's what China's like. So I spent a lot of time, I actually spent, I can say confidently, months watching lots of vlogs on YouTube and I think actually that was the time I really kind of discovered YouTube I probably wasn't using it that much before 2017 um, I was aware of it aware of it but I wasn't really using it that much and so but once I started um, researching I was researching literally typing in black in Singapore black in such all these different countries and then I also then started black in China and then I had to look up certain cities what was the most um, you know buzzing city to be in and expats and being an expat and etc and what do I need I've watched so many vlogs um, especially black in China vlogs um, you know because I need to know okay what about products and skincare etc food and you know how's that going to affect me and racism as well how are people going to respond um, and what's the main city I should be looking for and of course with my job I could go to I could be working in Shanghai so um, I did the research and I was looking and I said well you know what if this get, puts me in a position where I'm at least out of this country, not in a negative way, but I've got my foot in the door to, you know, show that when, with my employer I can then apply to move in other countries um, and it gives me the confidence, why not try it? So I applied for um, a job um, in Shanghai, in China, and I got it and I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I must have had about three interviews with the same company um, and one informal interview with them and they need and requested so much documentation I couldn't believe it I mean I was photocopying and photocopying so much documentation to um, to send to them you know getting my my degrees and my diplomas all my qualifications all my CPD qualifications notarized sending them all my police checks from england you know getting that whole process done and having it officially sent over to china it, it it took it took maybe a month for them to get all that information from me and then start processing it um and then they sent me a date of moving um and i said actually i can come before that date it was better for me to kind of come before the date that they had suggested um, and it was in at the beginning literally at the beginning New Year of um, in January um, to 2017 and I um, yeah, I was really just thinking about it now I couldn't even believe that I was going to be moving to Shanghai China I mean it just blew my mind so following um, watching all those vlogs about what to bring, what I need. Um, I, it really helped me to plan. So I purchased everything that was essential, <laughs> essential to me. Oh, I'm laughing now because it was just such a chaotic moment for me. Um, trying to just, you know, grasp that actually I was leaving one side of the world to go to another side of the world where nobody speaks. In my mind then, nobody spoke English. But it's the challenge, right? You have to just take yourself out of a comfort zone. <laughs> so I purchased all the things, the essential things that I needed. I, I bought the toothpaste. Um, you know, I use vegan toothpaste, so I bought you know a year's supply. My almond oil and shea butters and hair thing, everything that I, that was essential. My lip balms, everything that I felt that was essential to me that would make me comfortable then I, when I was there. Um, you know, I even took, you know, my parents are Jamaican, so I even took like tin Aki and Kalaloo <laughs> with me, you know, so I could have it just as a comfort. Um, 
and so yeah the day was coming quickly you know um, organizing my house in back in England which I still do have um, and just organizing myself and just my life and saying not goodbye to people but just goodbye if that makes sense goodbye but I'm gonna see you soon goodbye but I'll message you when I get there um, and yeah getting on the plane um, and arriving in China now that's going to be a completely different story I have to tell the story about the airport <laughs> the luggage and arriving at China I will completely make another vlog because that was the most tearful stressful moment and probably not what you what you're probably thinking but yes I arrived in China and um, I lived there for five years up until May this year I was living in China for five years living and working in China and I lived in two major cities and I will talk about that in subsequent um, vlogs um, I'm now living in Africa <laughs> and again I will talk about that in subsequent vlogs but yes my move to China was um, it was really swift actually the whole process was quite swift a lot of paperwork was needed but it was quite swift um, and myself organizing myself I mean I'm, I'm very organized a bit OCD but again that whole process was really swift or sorting out my passport and all of that was really easy I didn't have any issues um, but moving to China was a complete eye-opener I felt like I had woken up on a different planet um, but I will share that in another vlog um, so I hope you found that interesting and you know how I moved abroad and ended up in China I ended up in China purely out of just being spontaneous and the opportunities were there um, and it was my first time moving abroad and working abroad um, but yeah so look out for the other other vlogs on you know the airport my camera blew off the stand the holds camera blew off <laughs> so yeah I was saying I had to really challenge myself um, oh and inject a lot of common sense when it came to the luggage and I will tell you the story about the luggage, the plane um, and arriving in China. So I hope you found this um, vlog interesting and thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Bye bye.